This LED head torch, quite an interesting LED head torch because it's got the two outer lights and the one middle one as well. Uh, it was sent in to me by a chap called Jamie and he'd bought it from an online supplier and when he put the lithium cells in, he was rewarded with um, heat and uh, glowing electrical contacts. Now, I have to say initially when I saw the, well, when I heard about it, I thought, had the cells been put in, you know, one in one direction, one the other. But if you think of it, that would surely have had that effect in this one as well. So I wonder if there's an internal short circuit in here that's caused that. Uh, the other possibility for high current flow between the cells is if one of the cells is really freshly charged and one is like absolutely flat and you can get the, you know, because the voltage differential is the best part, well, it's a volt basically, you can get quite high current flow, but um, I'm not sure if that's what, uh, again, I would have expected if it was going to make this one glow hot and, you know, deform, then th this one would also have copped it. So it's an odd one. Uh, let's uh, open it up and take a look inside. Deep down, I'm hoping the inside find at least a wire with all the insulation melted off it and looking pretty sort of unpleasant. I've left uh, exposure on fully automatic on the camera this time, and uh, oh, there's a and also autofocus. There's a wire. There's a wire that's been nipped. And also, uh, it's off. All right, it's supposed to be onto here. But uh, so this is the negative, and it's uh, basically in common to the battery negative, which is a blue wire at that end. And there's a possibility this wire has touched the positive terminals. Although, to be honest, I would have thought that it would have been really more obviously burnt. Because look at the state of that terminal. It's really, it has basically heated up to the point it's discoloured and it's just held its last sprung shape, so to speak. And yet there's nothing really indicating a short circuit in this wire. You know, I, would, I just would have expect. I know this is copper and that's sort of, that's a phosphor bronze or a springy steel or something like that. So that's going to... You know, it's going to have a higher resistance and uh, than that. But uh, I just thought, you know, there'd have been something more visible in here. I'm almost disappointed because there's not enough carnage inside, but that's okay. Let's uh, explore this while we're in here. I have to say, I did try this in my bench power supply and it worked. So whatever fault it was, it had cleared. Uh, maybe it was this wire touching, you know, just during shipping it had, uh, had, had just moved. So it's got the classic little mystery 8-pin chip, which is almost certain it'll make a controller with um, the usual arrangement between pins 1 and 8 is, looks like the power supply to me. Um, there's what looks like a, is that a diode? Oh, it probably is a diode uh, to the chip to protect it. There's a capacitor across the chip for the power, power rails of the chip. Uh, there's another capacitor here going between negative and white, which is probably the switch button. That's probably the switch input in that pin. There's um, an output going to this LED and then a resistor. And then there's two transistors, because bear in mind there's uh, two sets of lights in this. There's the outer two and then there's the middle one. So there's two transistors being driven from this uh, chip here via, I'm guessing... They might be little fits, I'm not sure. It actually says on the circuit board, it says 2301. And then it's 2.7K, but the 2.7K looks as though it's just uh, between the battery positive. So whatever they are, they're either P-channel MOSFET, which I'm thinking they may well be, because the chip's driving the inputs directly um, of those uh, transistors with a, a resistor across between them and the positive rail. Uh, after that, there's four little resistors out to each of the channels, the two LED channels, which are coloured red and blue. And then there's a common yellow going up that lead, which is connected to the common negative of the whole thing. It's not very helpful that the charging socket has two red wires. You know, it'd be nice to differentiate between positive and negative. Anyway... 
Let's take a look at the other end while we've got this here and while we're taking it to bits. Oh, super, super stiff screws. Don't know if they've been locked in. Probably not the quite the right type of screwdriver for this, but not to worry. I've started so I'll finish. I also selected high dynamic range on the the it's the motor motor geo music at the moment to film with, and uh, I'm not sure if that does much. I know that the lights I've got here are actually between the camera um, and the what I'm working on, and maybe that it's just not perhaps an ideal lighting situation. There. Although having said that, I suppose it's almost like a ring light, except it's not ring shaped at all. It's just two uh, eight watt fluorescent tubes in little uh, link link together fittings. Oh, this is just not coming out easily. Ooh, okay. So there's the switch is just kind of pressed in. Is that just held in by a rubber grommet? Yes, it is. Oh, crikey, that's just it pop. Oh, it's got a little circuit board as well. Oh, this total, total tear down then. Uh, and a little marshalling circuit board, which has no circuit on it. All it exists is for is to spread the cables out from uh, the cable coming up, the four core coming up, which is like the common negative, the two switched positives for the LEDs and the button back. Glass, that's nice. Plus, oh no, that's that's heavy actually. Well, that's, that's machined aluminium and polished. That's quite nice. And then it's a Cree XML. It says Cree XML on it. Do we believe it's a Cree XML? It could well be. It's always hard to tell. I know there are uh, charts on the internet for actually trying to determine which LED is which. And it's got two fairly beefy sort of silicon insulated wires going out to it. I don't see any risk that they've shorted out in any way. Uh, what about these ones at the side? You can see the wires going through a little channel. Oop. Oh, the back moves as well. Oh, it's uh, all right, I see. It's all little heat sink assembly. What about the, what holds this in inside? Not a lot. Let's prise that out. Not that it requires much prising out. They're literally just held in place by the lens assembly. Yeah, there's a little sort of a sleeve push through there with the wires coming through it. And the back assembly of that it is, it just sort of slides out. Oh, right, okay, I see. That's, oh. So this plastic housing here has the metal ring with a recess in it that sort of aligns this plastic, uh, the plastic housing up, keeps it central. Um, oh, and then it's aligned the whole lot. Uh, the screws, I thought they were into sort of, I thought they were locked, but they're actually just into plastic. Um, so that's what uh, holds everything sort of in alignment. And then these aluminium things, just to pr presumably provide that extra heat coupling, uh, just insert from the outside and then are held in by the front lens assembly, which is quite a... It's basically just one of the little uh, LED reflectors. Same for the other one, I guess. Yep. Same arrangement. They're just probably connected in parallel. Yes, they are just both connected in parallel. That's interesting. Not the carnage I'd hoped, so I kind of like perplexed by how so much damage could have been done to that spring. Um, but there's no, you know, the the one wire that's floating about loose inside is, is not really showing signs that it's passed a huge amount of current. Because this isn't silicon, it's kind of a plastic cable. And normally, if it's even though it is copper versus the metal the other ones are, I would have expected that sort of, you know, damage. It's very odd. I'm not sure what's happened there. But um, interesting to see what's inside anyway. <laughs>